And we don't deal with Ebola every day, so there is a steep learning curve. And the best protocols are only as good as you can execute them. You got to train and practice to do that. So these hospitals, um, there's probably a handful of hospitals that are kind of that are that are entertaining this at this point in time. So what, what we really want to do is is uh, communicate to the general public that we've been thinking about this for weeks. We're working together. Um, there's no fail-safe plan, but we have a plan, and that plan is getting better and better uh, every single day as we learn lessons uh, from Dallas, as, as the guidance may change from the World Health Organization or CDC. We want to make sure we have that, we can digest it, we can think through it, and then come together in terms of what's the best way uh, uh, to be ready. What will happen is if that patient comes in and needs a test, We'll take two samples. One sample will go to our state lab and be processed within hours. The other sample will be sent by courier to CDC and be processed probably within 24 hours to, to 48 hours. Our test will be considered preliminary, whatever it is, positive or negative, um, a pending <coughs> CDC result, which will be confirmative, the, the real deal test. So if we get a preliminary positive, we're going to treat that patient, obviously, just as we would any positive. So that's the capacity we'll have starting next week. Can you say what? Really our primary area of concern here is the, the international traveler that fits the possible exposure profile that's coming in through, most likely through one of the airports in Illinois that has international connectivity. Now, obviously O'Hare is, is the primary when you're looking at airports, but there are multiple airports uh, in the state of Illinois that do have some international connectivity. So it's important to recognize those. But some of the contingencies include looking at circumstances where uh, a significant number of people would need to be quarantined for a specific amount of time. So if somebody arrives on a plane and decisions need to be made as to how many people need to be quarantined for a period of time during which the testing can be completed by the state lab for a few hours, what do we do in terms of where are those people transported in the interim, how are they quarantined, and who's actually handling that process while the testing is being completed until we can get a negative and then we recognize that uh, there is no future risk to those individuals. So I think, uh, we have to keep all options open. So it's certainly possible that somebody can actually fly internationally into one of the airports that's not being screened. As Dr. Hasbrook said, 90, roughly 95% of the people that are coming from the affected countries are traveling through the five points of entry that were identified by the CDC. So that means that there's still technically a 5% out there. So somebody certainly could fly through one of the places that's not being screened or does not have screening protocols that are in place so they could still travel by other means in order to get to us so be it rail car or any other more any other form or fashion and that's where we have the next layer where when we actually approach from the hospital's perspective of somebody coming in that's symptomatic we overlay that with the possible risk of exposure and then have to make decisions based on that so we're not trying to isolate it just to the airport that's simply our most likely uh, but we are trying to make sure that we consider all possibilities